Hi, my name is Roy O'Grady and I'm a member of the commercial disputes team at Brown Jacobson and in my workload I regularly advise education providers on their contentious matters across a whole range of issues and to hopefully reduce the prospects of your organisation entering into a dispute with your supplier. In this video, I'll firstly take you through the requirements of contract due diligence. And secondly, I will highlight some contractual terms that as a law firm, we are regularly seeing that our education clients are being stung by. So what is contract due diligence? Contract due diligence is the most basic uh, investigative exercise that you should take when entering into any of your contracts. Ultimately, the goal is to ensure that you can bring court proceedings against a supplier should they breach the contract. And the first step of contract due diligence is to make sure that the party named in the contract is accurate. If the supplier's name in the contract is inaccurate, you may face great difficulty in bringing a claim against that supplier. When you have the supplier's name, the next step requires you to go onto company's house, enter that supplier's name in the search engine, or uh, enter its company number in the search engine and then satisfy yourself that that business is a validly established business. The company's house website is free of charge and you can find it at www.companyshouse.co.uk. The next step required um, by contract due diligence, once you've found that company on company's house, is to satisfy yourself that that company is neither dormant and that it has not commenced a winding up process. If your supplier is listed as being dormant or as having engaged in the winding up process, it may be very difficult to recover any of your losses should they breach the contract. If you have any concerns about the financial health of your supplier, and even as a good course of practice, you should go on their company's house page, download their financial accounts and have someone of suitable expertise review their accounts to ensure that they're in good financial health. Finally, you need to ensure that the individual signing on behalf of the supplier has authority to bind that company into agreements. If you have any concerns that the individual signing on behalf of the supplier may lack authority, request from the supplier documentary evidence of their authority to sign. So to recap, one, check that the party names are accurate in the contract. Two, check that the supplier is listed as being on company's house. Three, check company's house again to ensure that the supplier is neither dormant and that this is not engaged a winding up process. And finally, make sure that the individual signing on behalf of the supplier has authority. Once you've satisfied yourself that you can enter into the contract, you then need to ensure that you are constantly managing your contract portfolio. And there are some key provisions that we are coming across that are regularly stinging education providers. So when looking and reviewing your contract or portfolio, firstly check, does that contract automatically renew and continue in perpetuity or does it have a fixed end date? After this video, when you have the time, review your internal mechanisms for ensuring that you are aware of which and when your contracts will automatically renew. Likewise, consider whether you know which of your contracts have a fixed end date. Consider whether a contract manager who can review your contract portfolio would be a worthy investment. Additionally, reflect on the internal mechanisms that you have in place to ensure that you are continually complying with the contract. For example, are you aware of all of your supplier payment dates? When it comes to terminating a contract, often contracts have stringent notice provisions that must be adhered to in order to terminate the agreement. If you are required to give notice to terminate one of your contracts, ensure that you know, one, what form does the notice need to be in? Two, how must it be served on, on the other party? Does it need to be uh, posted or can it be faxed or both? And three, how much notice are you required to give under the contract? Most of contracts that automatically renew will specify a time period uh, by which notice must be provided to terminate the contract.